bada boom. Oh. oh, hi. Uh, hello. This was supposed to be a private stream because I'm testing out the system. <laughs> testing chat. Hello. Testing. Hello. One, two, three. Hi, you guys. <laughs> oh, boy. Well. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, awesomely caught off guard here because I am, I was expecting to be not live. Um, so hello. <laughs> well, I'm here now. You guys want to help me test the live stream? Rafi, how's the weather there? The weather is beautiful. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit cooler today, but honestly, I'm looking forward to the coolness of the weather because it's been, you know, for the last 10 years, I love Florida, you guys, except it is perpetual summer and it's really nice to be here while the seasons are changing. What's up, Rafi? You look nice. Thank you, Kevin. The test works. Yes, apparently it does. Five, four, six, seven. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, wow. Um, <laughs> surprise. Thank you. Uh, seems that the test is working, Rafi. Lol. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, guys, for um, dropping in on me during my test. Surprise! Uh, yeah, well, since we're here, how would you guys like to spend at least 20 minutes together? And let's, let's have a chat. Laura. Hi, Laura. I wonder if I should move this chat thing to the next, because I'm like, hello, on this side. Maybe the other side. I don't know. We'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. So, yeah, right now I am getting things ready because uh, this is we do a private live stream with our patrons, but we do want to start doing a live stream on the uh once uh, at least once a month. So we could chat with you guys um, for, with everybody. Yeah. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Come on. Let's let's. Let's chat about art. Does anybody have any burning questions or anything that you would like to talk about? Or, you know, don't type too much because then I get all weird and I'm like, oh, hello, superstars. Hey, Ted. How are you? So FYI, you guys uh, probably know that the puppets are in charge of the channel right now because the uh, because Rafi and Klee. <laughs> Now I'm talking to third person. That's the weird side. Um, because we are extremely busy right now. As you notice, Klee's not here. That's because Klee is in the studio working on commissions and we're starting to get holiday stuff and like all the craziness is starting to happen for the holidays, which I'm not going to complain because that's honestly, that would be like a humble brag. Like, oh, we're so busy, but we are busy with house stuff and all that crazy stuff. Howdy. Hi, Casa uh laura hi love you and clee rants and all i so relate thank you laura a monthly live would be awesome yeah you guys think that would be cool because like i said we do this weekly with our rogues with the uh on patreon but we really would love to do like um like at least one live a month which was what we had uh <laughs> you guys caught me off guard, so I don't have any words that are working uh, to do one live a month. And that way we could connect with our overall community, which is awesome. We we read your comments and all that stuff, but I think it'd be really cool to do at least one live a month and do some special stuff. We have big plans for 2023. Uh, as you guys know, this year we moved in here, so we're still getting, we're still getting our bearings uh, when it comes to all the things you know like all the things because we do we have our art stuff in our art studio which is coming together beautifully that's an ever-evolving thing but we also have uh the music stuff which by the way you guys i haven't announced this yet but clean i got our first gig as musicians in december i'm gonna be playing music where you know like it's legit i don't know how legit it is but it, it's gonna be awesome uh, busy is good. Yes, busy is good. Thank you, Rafi, for all the inspiration. Much success. Thank you, Ted. That that means the world to me. Much success 
to everyone. Um, you know, the, the thing about doing what we do as creatives is, um, and this is a very strong belief of mine. If I can do this, then anybody can. And most likely anybody can do it even better than I have. So yes, caught you, caught your stream. Yes, this is, this is an accidental stream. And because I'm here, I'm just going to hang out with you guys for a little bit. Cause, um, it'd be weird if I was like, Oh no. And then I just shut things off. That would be, that would just be weird. Carol. Yes. Congrats. Yes. I'm so excited. Um, I'm terrified of playing music on stage. Clee was a, or still is not was a musician for about 10 years. She did a bunch of, uh, sang on stage in front of large groups and stuff. Um, I, me, I start, that's a fear of mine. So it's one that I'm very excited about, uh, facing cause I don't like being scared of things. And I think that that's what helped with um, our art career was I was terrified of putting myself out there. And then I just started doing it and realized that the only way to get over that fear is to just do it. Um, Kevin says, I've been a fan of yours for a few years now. You've been a good inspiration. I'm very happy for you and Clee. Change takes some bravery. And gosh, you guys really took the leap. Yes. Yes, we did. Um, we're something that I haven't talked about in the videos is that we're a little bit, I'm a little bit more extreme than Clee is, but we both got to a place where we realized that for about three years, we had been telling ourselves like, okay, we're going to move. We're going to, we're going to get our own place. We're going to get a bigger place because the apartment that we were in was tiny, tiny little apartment. So, um, we kept saying that we were going to do it. We kept pushing it back for about four years and then that final year, and I think after the, the the whole lockdowns and all that stuff going on, I think it got to the point where we were like, you know what, it needs to happen this year. So it was a very, very like strong, when we moved, there was a, a decision that we made where it was like, whatever happens, we are going to take, even if it means that we have to put everything in storage and live in a vehicle or rent an apartment or do whatever the, whatever it takes, we are going to move. And that part of it was extremely scary too, because it was like, almost like we gave ourselves the ultimatum because we realized that we kept putting it off. And it's really easy to put things off and keep putting things off until the time is right. And really, in all honesty, when you're making big change, the time is never right. And, you know, I'm not saying make, you know, really brash decisions. We had several plans, but like that was the, that was it. And so luckily a year later, here we are <laughs> in our humble abode, our new humble abode, which is uh, still a, a, a work in progress and something that we're navigating because, you know, I think we got really used to being in a crammed little space. So now it's like, you know, here's here's a media here. I'll show you guys real quick if you don't mind. So this is the media room. You see the puppets back there with the camera equipment and then all the music stuff. And then right now that is our closet over there. Uh, but it is eventually going to be a sound booth. So this is the music and media room and the studio is downstairs. And uh, yeah, it's been it's still a work in progress, but we're we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, nice. Congrats. I could thank you. Nice. Congrats. Naomi. Hi, Rafi. Love binging your videos. Wondering how you overcame feeling like your art isn't at its best feeling like it's not yet ready to be out in the world due to possibly being juvenile. Oh, interesting question. Uh, so I think, I think kind of like the story that I just said about us deciding to make a move, I realized that um, for the longest, for years, you know, and the thing is, Naomi, like, you know, you, you might see me as like, here I am doing this thing, you know, for a living and that it came easily. The fact of the matter is that from the moment that I left high school, I decided I was going to be an artist. And instead I, I went into corporate for 12 years and I did everything other than being an artist. You know, I went into corporate for 10 years. I worked the family business. I wasn't really, uh, I would try to approach art, but in a very, very timid way. And I always felt like I just wasn't ready. Like I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. The irony was that 
because I wasn't putting myself out there, I wasn't really creating that much work. I was maybe creating some stuff here and some stuff there, but I wasn't like actually, I was motivated to create, but I wasn't motivated to create. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Like it was the moment where I realized if I don't do this and it was terrifying, like actually it was Clee that was like, Rafi, you should really put your art out there. And I was like, I don't think I'm ready, blah, blah, blah all that stuff. And then I realized that if I don't do it, if I don't take that leap, if I don't just start putting it out there and I'm afraid that it's juvenile, right? Like all that stuff, like your artwork's juvenile. It's not good enough. You need a lot more, whatever, blah, 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 all that stuff. There's a big possibility that people are going to tell you that. And if you are putting yourself out there and you're putting yourself out there and you start to see the difference in all the comments that you start getting about your work where some people really love it some people hate it some people think that it's great some people think that it's amateurish um you start realizing that really at the end of the day what really matters is how you feel about the work right and you have to confront that sense of oh this stuff is juvenile because you're seeing it through what you think a professional is going to look at it through so there's it's a lot of the reason that we talk so much about things being uh like the mental game is because a lot of that like thinking that your work possibly might be juvenile right what standard are you basing it on because you could look at just about any artist out in history and if you compare it to one or the other then uh, it's going to be better than this person's work or worse than this person's work. And that's the thing about artwork is that there is no comparison. So Naomi, I would say like, just get started where you are, start showing your stuff. And the more that you progress through that, the more that you're going to progress in your art career. Like, you know, and, and the more people that you show your stuff, the more you're going to tweak it. And it's ever evolving. Like you're never going to get there at that place of perfection when it comes to your art. You're never gonna get there. That is a, a, a lifelong pursuit and it's just, it's just how it goes, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if that helped. Uh, Breath of Foam, just don't bring the stage lights up until you're like halfway through the first song helps with stage fright somewhat. Thank you, Breath of Foam, that's, that's good, thank you. Carol, I'm in the putting things off stage, needed a huge kick to get myself out of it. Yeah, when you when you get into putting it, that's where for chunking comes in, you know, where like you break it down. What's the smallest thing I could do on this just today, even if it's just for five minutes and then you get it started. And if after five minutes you're like, ah, screw that, then you try it again the next day and try it again the next day. Uh, Produce Man 13, did you make those puppets? No, a friend of mine, a uh, friend of ours, Clee and I, made those puppets he used to work with jim henson so they're like muppet specs but i can't call them muppets by the way we cried when we got those it, it was that's like a dream come true love the sunflower home you two have thank you laura uh kevin confidence it's all about confidence you always have to go for it and learn from the experience oh straight on kevin that's exactly exactly it uh, Laith Laverne, I've been dealing, dying to ask a question. How are you supposed to feel when you accidentally create something that gets a lot of views, but it's not on topic? I'm creating microblogs on creativity, more like my creative experience. Also, I have to run, so I'll check back later. Okay, bye. Um, I mean, you know, if it's something that you want to write about or that you want to create, then it's you. You know, it's kind of like when you're decorating a house and you go out and you're, you know, what they call hobo chic or, or um, I don't know, whatever it is that they call where like nothing matches. The fact of the matter is that if you, the same thing with your art collection, that's why you don't have to worry about doing one niche. If you're creating what you love to create or you're gathering or, or doing what you love to create, then it, it does become part of the, the larger topic, if that makes sense. Um uh Shusha. hey rafi love your videos man i am interested to see how you keep yourself mentally in balance when there are less orders for example okay so like when when we're not as busy 
Um, and that happens often. Don't think that we're like always busy. We're always busy with something, but it doesn't mean that we're getting a lot of orders or that we're making a lot of money. Our, our money mentality is set up in a way where it's like incremental and we save money over time. That way we're able to hit slow periods without totally freaking out. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't ever come close to that freaking out area. What I do when it's not busy is I give myself stuff to do. I work on a project. I work on big projects. Maybe I work on a series and decide that I'm going to release it. Like you got to you got to keep the momentum going. Um, it's easy when things when finances are not coming in to fall into a place where like, you know, you you start to focus a lot on that because it's it's easy to get desperate in that situation because you got to make money to pay your bills. What I find is that if I put my attention on a project that I'm going to be releasing soon and thinking more along the lines of like long term, all right, in two weeks, I'm going to release this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That helps me get past that stuff because you don't want to fall into that emotional pit hole of, um, you know, being too focused on the fact that finance and prepare yourself by having a budget in, in my money book. We, I, I, go over the way that Clee and I budget our stuff just for the unpredictable um, income because you have to as an artist. You're not going to be getting a check every week, you know, so you got to you got to prepare for those for those down moments. Uh, King's Craft. Hey, I really appreciate your content it has helped me make some of the best music in current time. That's so awesome. I love that. I love that. I would love to. Uh, so. If you comment on YouTube, I'll see your comment, but a lot of times it gets tricky. I would love to hear your music if you don't mind emailing us at our, our website. Um, it's info at rafiandklee.com. That would be awesome. Fire King, hey, what's up? Hey, Rafi, I don't want to write right now, so I don't want to write right now, so I'm here. I get like no feedback on the stuff I create, but I just roll with that. I love what you create. So keep on creating. Thank you, Fire King. And I, you know, I love what you create. A lot of times if you're dealing with feedback on social media, remember people don't always go on there. And a lot of times, even if people love what you do, they don't, you know, they don't hit the like thing. I know that I'm horrible at that. I try to like everything, but a lot of times I go through and I'm just looking at stuff and I forget to like things. So don't that I've I've gotten to the point where I just don't I don't take any of that stuff personal. Chances are people are loving what you do. I love what you do. So anything that you share, I I think it's awesome. Kingscraft, thank you, and I hope you can stay motivated to keep creating. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a work in progress, and it's something honestly that we're working on a video for next year where we want to talk about how you stay motivated in moments where like you know you're juggling a lot. When you're when you're doing what we do, you want to juggle a lot and keep yourself going. So that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> these these uh, live streams, by the way, go much much better and are much more entertaining when Clee's here because you know she's the she's the she's the smart one. Uh, Anita, hello, fellow artists. Hi, Anita. Breath of Home. Hi, Anita. Uh, Brenda, thank you. That was good. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Nannerbag, there is no there there. <laughs> What's up, Stefan? Uh, friend, I always say, look at other people's art, but make sure you don't compare your work to them. Yes. Boom. That's exactly what you do. Appreciate other people's art. Get inspired by certain things. There are some times where I look at something and there's a color combination that I'm like, oh crap, that's really cool. And then you want to, you, you, you know, you maybe want to reproduce something similar to that in your own style and something that you're doing, but don't ever compare the work because there is no comparison. There just isn't no comparison. Anybody that comes to me and says there is a comparison and you could compare this and that you're out of your mind. It doesn't work that way. Uh, everybody is unique and everybody's work is unique. So that's, yeah, that's how it works for me, at least in my mind. How to overcome perfectionism in portrait painting. Um, what I do or what I've done to overcome perfectionism is that I allow myself to be a perfectionist when it comes to certain things. So when you're doing portraiture, 
Obviously the eyes is what you want to get most. And then I'll practice on pieces and try to go a little, a little less perfect. You know, as long as you get the eyes right and it really starts to show you how you can veer off of it, especially if you want it to be your style. Um, there are some people that that perfectionist style, that, that ultra realism, that's, that's their style. That has a lot to do with technique, you know, with your, your, your techniques and stuff like that. And a lot of that perfectionism style or uh, ultra realistic is something that just about anybody can learn. It takes a lot of practice to get there, but um, you can do it. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm lazy. I don't, I don't like tedious things. I like creating there there's movement and action for me. So uh, a lot of times with stuff like that, where especially when it comes to portraiture or things that are realistic, I, I see where, where maybe I could break that boundary and allow myself a little room to make it less perfect, you know, and, and it's, it's a work in progress. There's, it's a work in progress. Trust me. Uh, Brenda shabby. Yes. Yes. Hobo chic. Yeah. That's my style. Not really my choice though. With breath of home. <laughs> that's what I told Clee when I first met her. It's like, yeah, well, we were talking about dressing styles. I was like, well, I'm, I'm a little, what you would call hobo chic. Thank you for all you do. You both rock. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Uh, new music player. Could you spell that email again? It's, uh, uh, oh, if you look over here, so it'd be info at Rafi and .com. Yeah. So that's the email. Thank you. I write 50 words a month at least, and nothing can stop me to be honest. I'm also working on theme park in Minecraft. So that's been some, that's awesome. Fire King. Yeah. Having a, you know, there's a really awesome book that I read that is called daily habits and they go over it and i listen to it in audiobook and they go over the daily habits of a lot of like very famous writers and artists and like picasso and all that stuff and they tell you like what when they got up what they did and all that stuff and it's it's really really an interesting listen of uh how these people took their like maya angelo and and her daily habits it seems like a lot of these people took like time off in the afternoon to go for walks and eat and stuff. And I'm, so that's something that Clee and I are trying to uh, get inspired by. We love you and Clee. You inspire many. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Uh, you guys inspire us. If, if I'm being completely honest, you guys absolutely freaking inspire us. We love, we love this community. We just love this community. Akuda, I find that regardless of the feedback, comments, etc., that the most helpful thing is the actual act of putting my work out there. It becomes a catalyst to keep doing it and create more and growing. Yes, that is so well said. That is so well said. Putting myself out there was was really the catalyst that got me going to make that serious, you know, make that much more serious, to put more time and effort into the creation of my work. Before that, there wasn't I was inspired to create and I wanted to create and I created for, you know, I create for myself. But the, the truth was that a lot of times because of my mentality behind it, the world took, you know, if I had this responsibility that came first and this came first and that came first. When I started putting myself out there, that's when art started to come first. Right. And, and I started to put boundaries up for other people that wanted to demand my time. It was like, no, this is my art creation time. You can't no. You know, so like it really does. It really is the catalyst for 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 doing it. Fire King, that's so true. It's easier to continue something than to start something. Yes, indeed. Francois, photorealistic takes more than practice. It takes a lot of yes, it takes a lot of time. If you don't mind spending a few months on the same painting, go for it. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah, that's that. That's what I meant. Uh, Crystal, hey, Rafi, just hanging out here back at home. Hey, Crystal. Space Art by Crystal. They came out and visited the Sunflower House. Um, so yeah, had a good time with you guys. And he's got a, uh, he does Space Art on Twitch, Blackbird CD. So really good stuff every Wednesday. Uh, Victor Reyes, shout out from Puerto Rico. Shout out. Uh, 
who does that? Kakuiz? Kakuiz? Hi. Sorry if I am mispronounced. Oh, I've read that. So fascinating. Oh, yeah. Daily Habits. It's good. Artists support artists. Yeah. Art. Art. <laughs> yes. Marketplace of Ideas. Thank. Thanks to your channel, I've been able to start drawing just for the relief of stress. Oh, I love it. I love it. Walks are great for the mind and soul. Indeed. Indeed. You know, and I love where we're living now because we get to see the change of leaves and the change of season and go out for brisk walks. I, I'm, we're really, we're really enjoying that. Something happened when we were in, in Florida that, especially during the summertime, it just got too hot and I don't like the heat. There are people that enjoy that. I don't like the heat. So, um, I'm kind of, gl I'm glad to be somewhere where we have seasons right now. You learn so much faster putting yourself out there yes i agree Jon jonelle i agree uh vic hey rafi i woke up to this live stream notification just what i imagine a lot of us fellow rogues need right now our connection with each other is vital our community big love vicky yes indeed indeed well i'm happy that you woke up to this it was an it was an accident. <laughs> I'm actually testing it because I want to start doing a uh, um, a public live stream every month. Uh, Clee and I have been talking about it. We're planning on starting that in the new year. Um, so like I'm testing all the the features and stuff like that. And so far it seems to be working. Uh, this was supposed to be a private stream for myself, but I'm very I'm actually happy that the mistake happened because it's it's really cool to be able to hang out with you guys. Um, oh, let me read this. There's where the pause happens. Thank you, Rafi. I literally put my foot down on occasion when it comes to creating. I've literally, be, literally become set enough not to go somewhere in order to write. Yeah. And that's, that's where, that's what putting myself out there did for me was it made me realize like, I need to set boundaries. This is, this is my, this is my love. This is my passion. I'm going to do it. And it's very easy to put your art aside because there are other things that are more important and really you got to make your art has to be important to you in your life and you got to be willing to tell people like mm, not during this time sorry i've got art to create hello from canada hey paul uh what i love about you guys is you share your experience while while helping others build their creative path keep up the great work rafi and clee thank you ted thank you that means that means the world to us because you know like what we do online, we do because we wanted to have that community and have that experience with people, like-minded people that are out there doing this. You know, as as a kid where I grew up, um, I didn't really find many artistic people like me. So, like, you you have, I don't know, it's, it's cool that we get to form this community out in the world uh, without being limited to your local area. I, I, I just love this. And of course, we have people in our local area now that we've connected with because we've put ourselves out there so much. But it's so cool to have this this awesome community in our rogues and stuff like that. It's really awesome. Uh, Martin, shout out from Kenya. How to develop your style with lots of criticism. Shout out to you, Martin. Um, so how to develop your style with lots of criticism is understand that you're going to get criticism no matter what. Look at every single mass, you know, when you think of like where the Impressionist movement, right? Impressionist, that was actually a put down by somebody and they just adopted it. Um, Picasso, when he started his, his weird style, his stuff got rejected. People were like, this is ugly. This is, you know, just about every innovative thing, Monet, um, Van Gogh, they're going to get criticism because it's hard to compare things that you or or it's hard to how do I say this when there's nothing to compare it to right um people will look for something to compare it to and a lot of times automatically they're going to compare it to something that they already like you know what i mean so it it's a weird phenomenon, but I think it's like some kind of natural phenomenon in our brain. So you just have to keep pushing through. You just have to keep creating it and cre keep creating it until what you're creating that was criticized becomes its own niche, its own thing that 
now you've created enough of them that enough people like, and then it becomes this, this thing in the social conversation. So it's just pushing through that criticism. You know, there is some criticism that maybe it connects with you and you're like, Oh, you know what? You're right. But if, if it's just putting you down and you're not getting anything from the criticism, then keep, just keep pushing forward. Just keep pushing forward. You know, I'm not saying to discount all criticism, but also take it with a grain of salt. Um, that's, that's, that's basically what I do. Cause in the beginning, I mean, in the very, the first day that I set up, my dad came by, I had done an abstract and he was like, what is this shit? You know? So like, you gotta, you gotta just push through the criticism and understand some criticism. Maybe you'll get a benefit out of most of it. You probably won't. You, you probably won't. GTA Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Susan, that's so many people from everywhere. It's so awesome. One of the best parts of writing for fun is seeing my gradual improvement. I keep coming up with ideas all the time. Yes. Yes. That's why you keep creating, you keep writing, you keep doing things and it just propels the, the propels. I don't think propels is the word. You know what I mean? It just move movement. You get momentum going. Uh, Anita, please do more live streams. We will. We will. We're planning on doing a live stream a month on our public channel. Uh, Shannon's Art Gathering. Hello. Hi, Shannon. Francois, south of abnormally warm Montreal, Canada. Awesome. Hey, from the UK, Col Colchester, Colchester, UK. Awesome, Pippi. Uh, breath of home. I used to put this sign on my front door. If we have an appointment, knock. If we don't, call first. If you don't have my number, there's no reason. Goodbye. <laughs> At least I do love you. I love that. I love that. New things are alien. Humans prefer safety of recognizing things. Yes. Yes, Pip. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's the thing. They've done scientific studies on this on how when you, when something new comes out, people don't know how to, they don't know how to deal with it. And so a lot of times what happens is people will kind of reject it for the most part. If that's where the criticism is coming from, you got to understand that. And you got to understand that the more you push forward through it, then that's where eventually enough people will get on board where now it becomes a totally different thing. Um, hello from Oregon. Hey, forever learning art. Uh, Diane, what are you using to live stream software wise? Um, I am using Streamlabs and this is my microphone. These are our actual audio mics for the music and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, that's what I'm using. Um, I don't know how to use it. Honestly, you guys, I'm not, I'm not that techno savvy. So this is all an experimentation. Charles, great live show. O'Fallon, Illinois. Oh, that's awesome. Illinois. I just said Illinois. Sorry, man. Illinois. Illinois. Uh, Rachel, hello for me. Hi, Rachel. Th Rachel, by the way, this was a, a an accident. I'm not supposed to be live streaming right now. And I'm watching the clock. I didn't want to just be like, oh, no. And then like shut this off because uh, it, it's kind of cool to be hanging out with... Uh, with the rogues, it's it's cool hanging out with the community. I wish Klee was here, but she's busy in the studio right now. Hi, Rafi. Where's Klee? Ziggy, uh, Klee's in the studio working on commissions right now. I was organizing the live streams, uh, trying to get this set up because we want to do a monthly live stream, public, a monthly public live stream. And um, I accidentally hit the go live button and went public instead of uh, not public. So yeah, <laughs> so that's where Klee is. What is this? Shh. Oh, I get the just not verbally yet, but most often empaths could tell when someone is feeling unspoken. Yeah, it, there's going to be people that are like, what is this shit? But they do that with everything, with every art, uh, with every, every work. Um, and it's just not, not taking it personally, understanding that really it doesn't have anything to do with you. Fear of the unknown is such an influence. Case in point, horror movies. I watched Silent Hill last night, and so, of course, I state this. Mm, yeah. Cosbin, I'm here to challenge the argument. <laughs> I love it. Love your survival guide book. I'm reading it for the second time now. Hugs from England. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. 
that book um that book is years and years of notes of uh for myself that i started putting for myself and compiling it was actually originally a bunch of notes that i would have up in the studio as reminders of to keep moving forward because especially when you're first getting started you want to surround yourself with as much inspiration as you possibly can to keep you going because it's it's easy it's very easy to get discouraged and and I would say that discouragement is the biggest enemy of of creativity and innovation and and moving forward obviously. So, thank you. That means that means the world to me. Leandri, hello from sunny South Africa. I've been a subscriber for a while and I've learned so much from you guys and have been able to approach the art world more calmly. That in itself helps so much. That is awesome. And thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That means the world to me. Um, Klee's probably going to watch this and, uh, it's going to mean the world to her too. Victor Reyes, do you sell prints? If so, what kind of printer do you recommend? Um, CMYK, make sure that it has all the color stuff. Uh, take a look at the ink, make sure that the ink is archival and then you could print your own Giclée prints. That's Giclée means jet spray in French. So yeah, that's, that's how that works. But yeah, CMYK, you want you want true color. You want good color and, and you want it to be archival. Um, and the paper as well. But most paper is archival, honestly. Most most printer paper paper paper. So Rachel, lol. Yes. Yes. I am this is an accident. Can you tell that I'm nervous right now? My ears are red. See? <laughs> happy accident, said Stephanie. Yes, happy accidents. Hi from New Jersey. I've always felt like an imposter artist until I found you guys. Thanks for your support. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we all feel like imposters. Every once in a while, I go through my imposter moments as well. Um, I think it's always a work in progress. The fact of the matter is that if you're doing it, you're doing it. There's, there's, you know, if you're not doing it and you're like, yes, I, I do that. I create art, you know, no. If you create something, if you sketch something, then that's what you do. Joe, Rafi, hey, Joe, how are you? Fire King, sometimes accidents are the greatest thing ever. I used to mistype River as Rover, so naturally I've accidentally typed Lazy Rover and not Lazy River. A Lazy Rover, that's great. <laughs> Look at that Lazy Rover over there. I've got three of your books hitting my mailbox tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Please give me some feedback on those books. It, it we, We're actually working on a new book um, that is going to break down. A, well, there's just, it's basically like a book on how to how to put yourself out there and, and face the nerves and the challenges and stuff like that. So that's. It's something that we're working. I don't know when we're going to release it because we've got a million things going on. So we're we're being mindful of our projects to make sure that we don't run into burnout because burnout is no bueno, no bueno at all. CMYK is so ideal for printing. I got that drilled in my head preparing Adobe certification exams. Yes, CMYK, do it. Please like, where's my Rafi? We caught him and we aren't letting him go. She probably is. I, I'm, I'm, I am going to end the live stream very soon, the impromptu live stream, because I would like to get downstairs to, to my Clee and uh, basically let her know what just happened because I think it's, she's going to find it hilarious. Uh, Victor Reyes, thank you. Absolutely. Francois Giclée was the trademark of the company that wanted to make inkjet prints sound more desired. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, it was, that's interesting because that was one of the things that I researched when I was writing the marketing book because I went back and I was looking at all the marketing and, and how simple things like that, like, yeah, yeah. You, a lot of times you want to take a close look at things. I, I have never paid for Giclée prints from a printer who was charging what a lot of printers charge for G clay, because I, I, I knew that the, it, the prices aren't justified. Let's just put it that way. Um, some, not all printers are like that, but you want to, you want to, you want to just watch, you want to watch because, um, yeah, that's all, that's all I have to say about that. 
New book, you say. I should get your other books. Only have the first one. Huh? <laughs> That's all right, though, Fire King. You sent me a video when you received it, and that was awesome. Holly, yes, I made it to the live. Hi, Rafi, you're the best. Hi, Holly. Um, Holly, this is, I'm about to end this because this was an accidental live, but we are going to do a live once a month on the public on the, on the public page because I think this would be this would be really cool. So I guess I'll leave this live stream up as an announcement to everyone that is catching this later that Klee and I will be doing once a month. We will be bringing back the live streams to the public forum um, so that we could chat with you guys because we absolutely love we love chatting with you guys. We really, really love being able to chat with you guys. And and it won't be impromptu. It won't be this, you know, like I just go live and, and you guys catch. We'll actually like list it ahead of time and all that stuff. So we we will be doing the lives. Brenda, just finished your book last week and I read read and ready for the next one. Love, love, love it. Thank you, Brenda. That means the world to me. This teenage boy talking trash about my Atlanta Hawks team. <laughs> he called me a crybaby. That's not good. That's not good. Nobody likes being called a you know, nobody puts baby in the corner. Diane, I just ordered some reproductions from MPIX and was happy with the price and quality. Came across a 50% off sale. Yes. And those are the things. You want to take advantage of those kind of things. And as long as you're happy with the price, that's that's where you want to be. This channel is one of the best channels on YouTube for art and mental health. Thank you, Marketplace. That means the world to me. That means the world to me. I, I, you know, we we started putting our stuff out there because we wanted to share this stuff on this uh, forum. And one thing that we wanted to make sure that we didn't do was go the route of, you know, taking just any sponsor, doing anything like it's really important for us to remain authentic. You know, I'm not going to talk about having an art career if I'm not doing art. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's a lot of people out there that talk about having art careers that aren't actually doing art. And so it's what's always mattered to me is that the only way that we could talk about something is if we're experiencing it and we know it and we do it. You know, don't don't just talk about it. Do it. Do the do the thing if you're going to talk about it. So that, that means, that really means the world to me. Uh, before now, it's been a while since I've tuned into a stream. Looking forward to more. Awesome. Thank you, Fire King. Uh, this made my day. Awesome, Carol. Well, I'm, I'm listen, you guys, I'm going to say goodbye uh, because I do need to get ready for other things. And I, you know, let me go downstairs and let Clee that I'm, I'm safe and I'm okay, that I haven't disappeared into a vortex of, um, you know, in some corner of the house or something like that. So uh, this made my day. Thank you, Carol. Can you tell me the best way to store watercolor originals? Um, I always put them in a sleeve and I keep them in a dark place. That's that's what I do. I, I always put them in a sleeve and keep them in a dark place so that they're uh, basically airlocked and protected from UV rays. Uh, well, you now definitely know that the live stream setup works. Thank you, friends. Yes, yes, I do. Thank you guys for helping me figure out. I'm cheap. <laughs> frugal, frugal, frugal is a good, yeah, frugal. I, that's that's what I am. I am very frugal. Thanks for going live. Everyone had a great, cre everyone have a great creative evening, Ted. You as well. Thank you. Thanks for not running away, Rafi. Good to get an artist live talk to boost my day. Awesome breath of home. Yeah, I didn't want to just, <laughs> just like, like get caught, like, oop, and then shut it off. That That's weird. I'd, then there'd, all be, there'd be all these things like, what was Rafi doing? Hmm? Yeah. I just sounded like Yoda. Rafi, hello, my name is Lil Buddy and I bought your book and it's very helpful. I love the whole get it done mentality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. That means the world to me. Shout out to all you artists out there too, says Victor. Yes. Bye for now. Take care both. Yes, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> Little but no, no. What the, we're going to be doing live streams once a month. We're going to be doing live streams on the public forum once a month. So you guys will be able to see us both. And it'll be great because it'll be me and Clee. Yes, and Clee. She's not here. It's so weird. She's not here. So yeah, it'll be both of us. And, you know, obviously she has a lot more brilliant stuff 
to say than I do. So it it'll the live streams will actually be good. That's that's a benefit of having Clee here. Oh my God, so sad. I just got on the stream. I'm at work. Oh, Lori, we'll be doing this again and it won't be like this impromptu where it just happens by accident. Also, you got your guys' videos are really helpful. Thank you, Dias. Thank you. That means the world. You too, Rafi. See you the next time. Say hi to Clee and have fun at your gig. Thank you, Carol. Hi, Rafi. Just wanted to say one thing. I gave up on art about five years ago and got back on it October 30th and posted one of my artworks as a celebration of my country election results. It was thanks to you and Clee and your channel that made me feel safe about creating and exposing my art. I am forever thankful. Thank, thank you for that. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's going to make me cry. Thank you. That means the world to me. Thank you. Uh, turn on notifications. Yes, turn on notifications for the channel so that when we go live, you get a notification. Um, I am so bad at that stuff. Uh, but thank you. Tell Clee how hysterical her story was about saying how to someone in an art show. That was great. Have an amazing night. I will. I will. I still laugh out loud at that. Come on, y'all. All right. Hi, Ruby. All right. I am saying goodbye, you guys. Let's see if this thing works here. Boom. Oh, it works. Look at that. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me during the testing of this thing. And like I said, we will start doing the, um, we're, we're gonna start doing these uh, public live streams with you guys uh, once a month. And I think it'll be awesome. Uh, I always enjoy these. We do, we do our public live streams with our rogues. We do private live streams with the rogues and we always love hanging out with them. I think it'd be cool to also hang out with um, our, our rogues out there in YouTube land that uh, at least once a month that would be really cool so I adore you guys and uh, Clee's not here to say goodbye good day just pretend that was that was weird that was not I do have a puppet up there okay say goodbye Clee good day all right that's it that was really weird like you guys are probably like Ralphie's weird yeah Okay, either way, thank you guys. I adore you. Mwah. Talk to you later. Um, how do I end this? Okay.